Hello, this is Bill Hunt. Welcome to the IBM BPM tutorial demo series. For more demos and other resources, you can go to ibmbpmdemos.com. In this tutorial demo, we're going to take a look at process playbacks using Process Designer to build some process elements from scratch. So let's go ahead and get started. In Process Designer, I'm going to take a new activity from the BPMN palette and add it to our diagram. This new manager activity is what we're going to be building out. So let's go ahead and connect it into the process. And first off, since we claim that the process is always runnable, no matter how little or how much you've implemented, let's actually run it before we've built anything out about the new manager activity other than just dropping the box on the diagram. So let's press this run button in the upper right hand corner which we like to call the playback button because the spirit is that we're going to play this back to business and IT, the business and IT stakeholders early and often as we're building this out so that we're always in sync in a rapid, agile, and iterative fashion. So let's go ahead and step through this. We can see that it's highlighted in the diagram. We're running at the first new manager activity that we've just added to the process diagram. Let's go ahead and claim that activity and see what it looks like. Well, it turns out that we are provided a default user interface for activities that aren't yet implemented. If we look at the details of that, we can see the instance ID. So we can see in the list in the top left the unique instance ID of this process instance, this order is 505, so that makes sense. And the task ID, we also have for each activity in the process as it's executed, a unique task ID. That shows up here as well. So, so far I think we're tracking along. When we progress through this activity and refresh the process diagram, we can see highlighted in the diagram we've gone from the manager activity to the create order activity. So we have focus in the process diagram indicating where we're at. So let's go ahead and claim and run that activity and see the user interface that's not unlike some of the UI elements that we're going to build out for a new manager activity. For create order, which is already built out, let's go ahead and, and populate some, some order information. Let's create an iPhone 5 case order for the West Sales Division high priority a particular due date, a quantity of 100, and some planner comments. Please expedite this order in support of our launch campaign. And that's going to come from Beth, our senior analyst. Let's add a document attachment, which is one of the many things we do mainstream to BPM, and then proceed to the next screen in the screen flow. So we have a live report. We have the analyst comments there. We can choose the vendors that we're going to farm this out for quotes. To. And then in the summary screen, we see all the information that we've provided in this set of screens that is helping to coach us through participating in the process. Now, before I press the submit key, I'm going to actually change the process on the fly. Let me change this connection and connect it back to this new manager activity so we can loop around and experiment with iteratively playing back the evolution of our new manager activity. So let's go ahead and use the activity wizard. And in the activity wizard, we can choose or, or get a jump start on implementing different activity types. So they can be user activities, it can be system tasks like calling a, a service or a back-end system. They can be business rule decision tasks. They can be scripts like JavaScript, uh, a sub-process or linked reusable sub-process. In this case, we're going to take the choice of a user task. When we finish, we see that it has implemented a starter user task for us with one coach screen. We can name these coach screens anything we want, so I'll call it new manager activity screen one. And in here, it's already created a default user interface for us. So it turns out that as we create new user interfaces, we can reuse them over time. I'll show you that in just a minute. So let me go ahead and continue using this activity. I'll go back to the create order screen and actually submit it to progress the process and since we've wrapped around that connection back to new manager we can see this growing list of activities which is now sitting on our new manager activity that we just generated a screen for and let's see if it's working so we'll go ahead and claim and run that activity and, and sure enough 
the data that's going through the payload of the process that's being managed by the process engine is flowed into this screen. So we, it looks like we have the beginnings of building out this activity. Now, we're actually going to build some screens from scratch to give you a feeling for what it's like to build from scratch. You notice that screens that I previously built, I can surface and advertise on my visual palette of views. We call these views, called coach views. So we can build custom views, reusable, componentized, nested views, uh, and then make them easily available on a custom palette. So here are some other views that I've previously built to give you an idea of variety. Uh, and we could use those if we want, so to get you know really good accelerated reuse out of our development efforts. We can also drag and drop process data. So we have the data structure of our process data in the visual palette. And when we drag and drop out, for instance, order, if there's a view that's already been created for that data type, it will go ahead and, and choose the view, and we can cycle through different versions of this view if there are multiple user interface designs for a particular part of our process data structure. Uh, now, we can also see down in the property sheet that that view uh, is bound to the process data, meaning it will display the process data, and if we change data in that user interface set of controls, it'll update the process data. And we see the complete data structure that we can bind uh, the UI controls to, and the ones that match the data types are highlighted or bolded. Okay, so let's move ahead. Let's go ahead and, and create some things from scratch. Uh, let's create a new section. We'll call this the order details section. And uh, for clarity's sake, I'm going to drag out one that I've already created and show you how we create that from scratch. So we'll use that as kind of a model, if you will. Let me drag and drop a three column layout here and then go to my process data and in an a la carte fashion visually drag and drop out the different data elements order number material number material description or product description the customer field total quantity data element the issue date let's go grab the sales division and also the priority and then go find the quote deadline uh, so there we go. So we've got this built from scratch screen. And now early and often we want to play this back either for ourselves or for our business and IT stakeholders or all the above using the playback button. Either the component playback button we see here or building out individual components of the process or the process playback button that we'll use in just a few moments. So we can see this is what the screen looks like as we're building it out. If we change the screen by dragging and dropping it UI elements around and press the playback button again, it runs the screen immediately. So we can quickly and easily iterate through our process development, including screen layouts. So now let's do a bit more. There's a part of the process data called vendor responses that's actually an array or list of data. And so IBM BPM's process designer knows what to do with that. It says, well, the most appropriate UI element for that is a table. So now you go ahead and, and lay out the elements of it that you like. I'll rename some things, uh, maybe uh, narrow it down to just the elements I care about, company name, contact, email, and username. And I'll go ahead and frame it so it's visually appealing and change some of the names here. I'll call this Analyst Recommend Recommended Vendors and either hide or show different titles. All right, that looks rather clean. Let's add a bit more to this. Planner comments is a field that we use to communicate and collaborate across different participants in the process. Let me select a different UI element, not just a text field. Let's, let's make it a text area. So we can just type part of the name, and as we do, it will zero in on the various process artifacts like UI elements. Uh, so I choose the text area dojo widget for that. Let's frame it in a way that's visually appealing. Drag and drop the planner comments text area inside of that uh, section and away we go. So let's play it early and often. We can see it's shaping up here. Now we have three sections. Uh, let's go ahead and use an accordion tab layout to organize this in a more compact fashion. Let me drag and drop some of these sections into that tab layout making them different pages or tabs in this tab layout. And let me duplicate this accordion tab layout because I want to show you a couple of different versions of this. One version that is an accordion 
layout, so we'll call that the accordion, and one that is a tab layout, so we'll call this tabs, and configure that to be tabs. And, and uh, let's go ahead and play that and see what it looks like. So the accordion one on the top behaves like an accordion, as you would expect, and the tab layout behaves as tabs. Let's get a little bit fancier. Uh, let's go ahead and lay some more elements out. I want to be able to see that planner comment separately without having to go drill down into the tab. And then we're going to do something <clears throat> subtle here. We're going to drag the tabs into the accordion. So it's actually going to be a nested tab section. And we can see in this design mode, we can actually navigate through it in a somewhat of a WYSIWYG fashion. Let's play this back. We can see the accordion layout, the nested tabs inside of one of the accordion elements, and there are the tabs. So we can efficiently organize our screen real estate. Let's do one more thing here. Let's copy that and give you another example of how we might lay things out. Let me grab an expanding section, a dojo title pane, and let me drag this into the title pane, which I'm calling an expanding section. And let's go ahead and play that back and, and see how that looks. We'll call this the title of the title pane, Order Details Expanding Section. Let's go ahead and use that playback button. So now we can see up at the top we have an expanding section that we can expand or contract. That's an efficient use of screen real estate. We have our accordion layout, the nested tab views, and the planner comments down below. Uh, now, one of the things we can do, since we see this expanding section begins in an open state, we can configure that for even more efficient screen real estate to be initially closed. There's all sorts of things we can do with the dojo-based coach views. So, you can see it begins in a closed state now. So, let's move ahead. Now, let's, let's go over to the inspector view. That's where we can work with the running instances of our process. And let's actually tap into this running instance of our process, the order in flight, and see when we do so that it actually flows the payload of the process, all that data, right into this screen we've been building. So now we can get some really dynamic, rapid, agile, iterative playback sessions where we can work with the end users, the business or IT stakeholders that really understand how the process needs to work and view it in the high fidelity of, uh, of example business data. So let's go ahead into the screen layout and let's start, let's start using it in the context of the end user environment to see how the screen real estate is further managed. So let's go look at, this is the actual instance of the process, the order that I was just working with inside of the process designer. We can access that same instance of the process, that same order that's in flight from the process portal because we're sharing the process model. So let's go ahead and move things around further, refine and do dynamic playbacks. We just move the planner comments in the designer from the bottom location up to the top of the screen, let's see if it really worked by revisiting this in-flight order. Sure enough, we can change it on the fly. So now let's go back and do some more layout. Let's use a two-column layout and see if we can uh, further refine the screen real estate. Let's put them side by side and see how that looks in the end user environment, the process portal where we have uh, various eye candy on the right hand side, we have our body area in the middle. Uh, let's go ahead and, and refresh this from our work list and it picks up the changes on the fly. We've got our accordion section on the left side with the nested tab views. We've got the, the planner comments on the, on the right side. So we can see this is really a dynamic, rapid, agile, iterative approach to playing back and building out what it is we need to do for the process. So we'll continue changing this. We can see with all the live data um, how things look. Let's go ahead and move the accordion up to the top and visit it again. 
and we can see now the accordion or the expanding section is up at the top. Let's go ahead and see some other things that we get out of the box, like for instance this collaborative editing capability. In other words, with zero additional development effort, these new views that I just built, this, this new human activity called new manager activity I just built out, with no additional development effort, is automatically enabled for collaborative editing. So if Beth or Elizabeth on the left-hand side asks for some help when she's using this activity, and asks to collaborate with Bill. Uh, and Bill, perhaps in some other city, state, or country, gets that collaboration request. He can simply accept it, and now, when Beth clicks on fields, Bill can see, with those red highlights on the right, wherever he is in the world, what Beth is doing. And as Beth changes data, he can see that, that Beth changed that field. Uh, and, uh, and, and she can get pretty jazzed up about this. You know, this is... Uh, this is great that we can collaborate real time and you can see it's highlighted where she's at and it says Elizabeth Hahn has changed this field and then if she wants to she can let Bill drive and let him take over control and now uh, when Bill types in this field Beth sees that Bill's working on that area and when he makes a change to it yes it is great that we can collaborate real time from Bill, the management consultant, Beth can see those changes real time. So we pick this up out of the box with zero de additional development effort for anything we build in Process Designer. Uh, lots of capabilities to accelerate your design and development experience and to get the solution out the door more quickly. So before we finish, let's go ahead and complete this dynamic design and development scenario. Let's continue on the create order uh, and before I hit the submit button on the final screen let's do one last final change. Let's dynamically rearrange the connections in this process diagram, save it and submit it and what should happen is that we've progressed further on down in the process. So talk about a truly dynamic experience Imagine using this with business and IT process stakeholders to really engage in the experience of, of building out the right solution uh, with the right kind of dynamics. So now when the vendor goes ahead and, and claims this activity and works on it, if we go ahead and look at the one final point in the process portal, with all that work and those changes that we've made to the process, including that new uh, visual elements, that new activity, you can see that whatever changes we make to the process diagram are also automatically pushed out to the end user community so they can see exactly where they are in the process as well as who's worked on the process along the way. So hopefully this has been a good tour uh, for you of how process designer can be used to do dynamic playbacks and if you would like Additional examples, you can go to ibmbpmdemos.com for more demos and other resources. Thank you for watching.